I'm Peter Blanc at TCT 2019 in San Francisco for ACC.org. On my left is Mike Mack, an old friend from Dallas. And Mike has been uh, a cardiac surgeon instrumental in doing all of the good non-surgical stuff that we as cardiologists have thrust upon the surgeons uh, and has done it in grand style. Mike, uh, the COAP trial is a trial that um, was a tricky one in that it was selected patients with mitral regurgitation that either got a clip or a guideline-directed medical therapy. Now we have three-year follow-up, and I cheated. Uh, Mike and I were talking before, and I said, let me guess. I think they're not going to do as well as they did at two years, and Mike said, wait a minute. So I'm not going to take away your thunder, Mike. Tell me what three years tells us about COAPT. Uh, so the three-year results, of, so the, fir the uh, first presentation of COAPT was two years. Uh, we now are a year later, we have three-year results, and it, what it shows is two things. One is that the result is durable at three years. Uh, patients with MitraClip continue to do well and better than patients with uh, guideline-directed medical therapy. And then secondly, at two years, we're allowed to cross over patients. Yeah, so let me interrupt and say, let's wait for the crossovers for a minute. Let's go to the non-crossover patients. Mm -hmm. So you say that they don't do as well. This is recurrent hospitalizations as an endpoint primarily. So this is uh, re all heart failure hospitalizations. This is uh, time to first heart failure hospitalization, and this is mortality. Okay. The benefit was still there with, uh, in all of those parameters. So every one of them, even individually, the patients with mitral clip did better. Correct. Okay. So, number one, it, this clip business seems to work. Uh, much better than I ever would have predicted. Me too. But the fact is, that's terrific. So let's talk a little bit about the crossovers, because of some patients were allowed to cross over at two years. So uh, there were 58 patients that crossed over. It was 38% of the patients that were eligible to cross over at that point. And in the patients that crossed over to MitraClip, uh, they did as well as patients that got the MitraClip to begin with at the beginning of the trial. So we only have about 12 month follow up on those patients. Uh, but if you landmark it back to the time that they crossed over, their, their pattern in terms of heart failure hospitalization, mortality, uh, time to first heart failure hospitalization exactly mirror those of patients that got MitraClip initially. And it actually looks, um, when I looked at the uh, <clears throat> curves with you, it looks as though they may really do very well if they can get out to two years, indicating maybe if you can get out to two years, you're pretty good, and then when you get the clip, you're really good. Is that right. fair yeah, statement? Yeah, there's a little bit of a survival selection bias in that, I would say. Uh, but the point is that uh, those patients that even after two years of guideline-directed medical therapy did get a benefit to MitraClip. Okay. So the short version of this, Mike, uh, you know, somebody once said if you had a little mitral regurgitation, it was really not good for you, and I would agree with that. Would you want to have a mitral clip if you had 3 pars MR and uh, we're getting into trouble? So first of all, we have to qualify this. This is functional or secondary MR. Exactly. And, and this is the first time that um, it has been shown that interrupting the mitral regurgitation does make a difference. And they're selected patients. In selected patients Fair that enough. are on guideline-directed medical therapy. Their whole past year since the initial results of COAPT and Mitra FR were presented has been a lot of these are uh, diametrically opposite results. How can you explain this? It seems we are getting smarter at defining a responder population, and that responder population uh, is those patients that are maximally treated on guideline-directed medical therapy first, and then secondly, those patients that have what's being termed disproportionate mitral regurgitation. In other words, the more severe the mitral regurgitation, the less dilated the ventricle, the greater the chance you're going to respond to mitral clip or other therapies. And the better you do. And, uh, yeah, and I guess we're also getting better at doing the mitral clip. Yeah, absolutely. There's no question that acute procedural success and durability of the mitral clip is also predictors of doing well long term. Thanks, Mike.